So our regulatory health agencies in the United States are a complete joke. There are many food additives which are banned or regulated in Europe due to their potential to cause cancer, hormone disruption and developmental problems, but got the blessing of the FDA to be mixed in our foods. And these additives usually do not have any real biologic function or any health benefit at all. Their whole purpose is to make your food look prettier, stay fresh longer and of course generate more profits for the manufacturers. And while I do not think that we always have to ban these items necessarily, we should at least label foods appropriately so that we can make informed decisions, right? Now here are five food additives that are banned in Europe, but legally added to many foods in the United States. Number one, azodicarbonamide or ADA. Now this compound can be found in Wonder Bread, dinner rolls, pizza dough, tortillas, and hot dog buns, as well as yoga mats and other foam plastics. It is used to bleach flour and to make the dough more elastic. It might cause a little bit of cancer, but apparently too little for the FDA to keep us from eating it. Now ADA helps the manufacturers get even faster from mixing the dough to baking the bread. And this is usually done in under two hours, which is pretty impressive. And this is, by the way, one of the reasons why people in Europe tolerate wheat products better, as the dough is usually allowed to ferment for 12 hours before baking it. And of course, it does not contain the multitude of chemicals that we use in the United States. They also use a different type of wheat with 60% less gluten to begin with. And oh yeah, they do keep the ingredients for bread and yoga mats separate from each other. A 2020 publication in the Journal of Basic and Clinical Physiology and Pharmacology found that ADA could be injurious to the body cells and organs in rats. So there's that. Now, azodicarbonamide has been banned in Europe since 2005 due to its carcinogenic potential. In the United States, the legal amount of ADA added as a bleaching ingredient to flour is less than 2.05 grams per 100 pounds of flour or 45 parts per million. And even though this sounds like a small amount, it is quite substantial in my opinion. Number two, potassium bromate. Now, potassium bromate has been banned in the European Union since 1990, actually. And in a 2023 publication in Helion, the authors note that free radicals of potassium bromate in human blood result in nephrotoxicity and cancer. It also induces renal cell tumors, mesotheliomas, and uh, thyroid follicular cell tumors in rats. In addition, it exerts mutagenic effects and causes injury to the tissue of the central nervous system and the kidneys. Now, potassium bromate is used here in the United States in flour to strengthen the dough and allow for higher rising. So it makes the bread look a bit bigger and prettier and more perfect, right? It has been linked to increased risk of cancer, kidney failure, hearing loss, and neurobehavioral changes. Now, the health issues surrounding potassium bromide are not new. In uh, 1999, the International Agency for Research on Cancer classified potassium bromide as a possible human carcinogen. And I know some people will write, hey, but they only allow 75 milligrams per kilogram of flour of potassium bromide, and most of it will change during baking from bromate to bromide, which is thought to be non-toxic to humans. And the small amount that's left behind is lower than the amount rats ate to get cancer. In my opinion, this is a very ridiculous argument. We have no long-term controlled human data on these toxins and individual consumption, metabolism and storage will vary greatly here. Now, the exact amount we should have of any of these toxic chemicals in our foods is exactly zero in my opinion. Also, keep in mind that the industry is frequently lying about the ingredients. 80% of avocado oil samples that claim to have 100% avocado oil on the label, right? There's, there's nothing else in there, supposedly. They were mixed to a very high percentage with cheap soybean oil, and no government agency got involved even after this finding was published by UC Davis. So as of October 2023, potassium bromate, along with uh, brominated vegetable oil, polyparabens, and red number three, has been banned at least in California, but it's still legal, of course, in all other states. And while I don't always agree with the uh, politics in California, at least they're doing something good when it comes to these food uh, additives. And potassium bromate is just one of the problems in our refined flour, by the way. Now, U.S. wheat, since I would say about the 1950s, is hybridized and it contains 60% more gluten than the European soft wheat. It is heavily sprayed with glyphosate. It is then stripped of nutrients, enriched with uh, synthetic vitamins, fortified with iron and mixed with preservatives to extend the shelf life. And this chemical concoction that we're eating, and this is not only in our breads, it's in many of the um, junk foods that we're eating, many of the processed foods. 
may be one of the reasons for our epidemic of obesity, diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. So it's one of the things that I think, along with seed oils and plastics and all these other things, uh, are, are blessings of modern civilization that contribute to a rise in these diseases. All right, number three, artificial food colors. Now we're talking about red number 40, yellow number five, yellow number six, blue number one, and more. Now these are not completely banned in Europe, but they do require either a warning label or an E number or both. And this indicates that a toxic ingredient is present in your food. And it's your choice to buy this one or go for a different product that hopefully does not have any E numbers. So you read these capital E letters on there on, on products in Europe, that's the stuff to avoid. Now there are many toxic ingredients in these colors. They are made from petroleum or crude oil <clears throat> and uh, the food colors are manufactured in a chemical process that includes formaldehyde, aniline, hydroxide and sulfuric acid. And if you think that none of these contaminants end up in the final product, then you may also think that beer is healthy for you. Now, the impurities uh, are not only the ones in the process as it's being produced, but you know, in this whole concoction, they also have arsenic, lead and mercury, and they may be present there as well. And they may unfortunately also end up in the final product. Now, food dyes have been linked to cancer and behavioral problems. Some researchers find that these chemicals can exacerbate or even be causative for ADHD and possibly even autism. Now, concerns of food dyes exacerbating symptoms of ADHD and autism have been expressed since the 1970s, actually. We also know that autism has increased dramatically over the past 70 years to as many as one in 59 children as of 2018. Now, the neurotoxic effect of artificial food colors is known since 2011, yet we're still eating them. Now, in the review article, Toxicology of Food, uh, of food Dyes, the authors find that uh, three dyes, red 40, yellow 5, and yellow 6, have been found to be contaminated with benzidine and other carcinogens. At least four dyes, blue 1, red 40, yellow 5, and yellow 6, cause hypersensitivity reactions. Numerous microbiology, microbiological, and rodent studies of yellow number 5 were positive for genotoxicity. So this is potentially cancer causing as they interfere with our genes. And while the European Union warns and or limits these chemicals, the FDA is of course looking the other way. As of this date, the FDA has not studied the effects of synthetic dyes on behavior in children. By the way, one of the worst offenders when it comes to artificial food colors are of course Fruit Loops, the beloved cereal that is very bright in colors, right? Now you can get Fruit Loops in some European countries, but um, oftentimes they have natural colors from vegetable extracts in there, and they do not look quite as bright. So from a sales perspective, I'm sure it's not as good. They also probably won't taste as uh, artificial uh, and yummy to children as you know the American counterpart is, right? Now these colors uh, are lacking sort of uh, strength and, and brightness, and they look a bit more dull. But of course, this is uh, significantly healthier. There might still be some other crap in there that you want to eat, but at least you don't have those artificial food colors in there in your Fruit Loops in Europe. Number three, brominated vegetable oil or BVO. So brominated vegetable oil is an additive used in some soft drinks and citrus flavored beverages to enhance uh, the flavor and maintain the uniformity of the drink, right? So that basically, when you think about like some, some oils that are mixed in there, they will otherwise separate. And when you have this brominated vegetable oil in there, this BVO, it allows this suspension to stay in there and it doesn't separate. Now, many big brands have actually dropped it from their products because it became so unpopular that people didn't want to buy their beverages anymore. So a lot of the big brands, Coca-Cola and so on, they took it out of their products, right? But it is still found in some uh, citrus flavored soda, citrus flavored sports drinks, energy drinks, uh, fruit flavored syrups, and some baked goods. Now, its use has been met with considerable controversy to its potential, uh, due to its potential health risks. But, uh, uh, and this is because the BVO contains bromine, a chemical compound that can accumulate in the body over time, leading to adverse health effects. Studies have linked excessive bromine exposure actually to various health issues, including neurological disorders, thyroid dysfunction and reproductive problems. So perhaps the most uh, concerning, in my opinion, is the potential to disrupt hormone balance, which can have very far reaching consequences on overall health and fertility, of course. Now, despite these concerns, <clears throat> BVO is still permitted for use in certain beverages. So we haven't really in the US really um, said we're going to ban it. It's up to the manufacturer to use it or not. And again, despite the negative press, I would say some of the smaller manufacturers are using it and in these sports drinks and citrus flavor drinks, 
it seems that they can't really do it very well or uh, achieve the taste they want to achieve without mixing it in there. But it's just good to know, and it's usually on the labels. So I would definitely read labels. I mean, I wouldn't buy these sports drinks anyway. I think they're full of other junk as well. But if you have one of those, you can check it. If it says BVO or brominated vegetable oil, I would probably kick that one out, right? And of course, it's <clears throat> not actually made from vegetables at all, but it's rather made from soybean oil. According to the FDA, the maximum concentration of brominated vegetable oil in beverages is 15 parts per million. Again, we can argue if that's a small amount or not. In my opinion, it's way too much and we should just avoid it altogether. Number five, BHA and BHT. So this is butylated hydroxyanisole and butylated hydroxytoluene. And they're frequently added to cereals, gums, baked goods, butter, potato chips, and so on to prevent fats from oxidizing. And uh, thereby they significantly increase the shelf life of the product. And while the FDA, no surprise here, considers them safe, the NIH recognizes them as a possible carcinogen and California lists BHA as a carcinogen on Prop 65. So good on California again. Um, again, a lot of stuff is not great there. However, they are actually pretty good on all those food additives. The manufacturers will often write, uh, it's in there to preserve freshness. And that sounds much better than saying, hey, we're adding a cancer causing preservative to your already questionable food. Enjoy. And of course, since the endocrine disruptors, uh, there's an issue here with fertility as well. A reasonable alternative to using BHA and BHT would be vitamin E, but of course it is more expensive. Now, Europe, Japan, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand have banned BHA and BHT, recognizing their link to cancer, hormone disruption, and impaired blood clotting. But we're still enjoying it plentiful here in the United States. So we cannot really rely on our health agencies to screen our foods to protect us from unnecessarily added toxins. And I'm saying added here. We know that some foods have naturally occurring higher levels of toxins like heavy metals, for example. Dark chocolate contains higher levels of lead and cadmium naturally, even if it's organic and completely unaltered. And I still eat that in moderation. Now, we have to just educate ourselves on what additives are in particular foods so that we can navigate the supermarket jungle to avoid hazardous items without breaking the bank. And ultimately, that is, of course, a concern, you know, because foods without chemicals, without additives, food that I think are healthier for us, oftentimes are more expensive, but not always. But I think the key thing is really to educate ourselves on what we should not eat. Most of these have to be listed on the label. So you can always look at the label and if it says BHA, BHT, if it says, you know, uh, brominated vegetable oil, uh, then just, you know, avoid it. I mean, I would just uh, kick those out. And there's always alternatives, sometimes more expensive, yes, uh, sometimes not. But usually when we buy foods that are single ingredient foods, we don't have any of these issues really. So these are more in processed foods, they're more in foods that I would more consider junk foods and of course baked goods, unfortunately. And uh, there we just have to screen it. I don't like the idea of American flour to begin with. Now there are some very good bakeries, even in the United States that make bread a different way. Uh, sometimes they use einkorn flour, which is fantastic. You know, um, there are great bakeries that are using that and they make very good products, a bit more expensive, but you know, you don't have to eat this every day and um, infinitely healthier. And again, when I go to Europe, I will eat uh, bread over there. It doesn't have all the junk that we put in there. Uh, we use less glyphosate over there. And also the additives are just uh, uh, less. And of course, it's a different type of wheat to begin with. But here in general, if you can decrease your consumption of wheat products, you will also decrease your consumption of many of these additives. So if you found this um, helpful, please uh, subscribe and leave a comment or question. I'm very interested particularly which type of ingredients or additives you're trying to avoid in your foods and also what has made the biggest difference for you.